Now more than ever, medical misinformation is a problem. From Twitter to Facebook to your friends, it seems everyone is now an expert. But we have an actual expert joining us this morning. That's Dr. Sandy Falk, editor-in-chief of Merck Manuals and a practicing physician at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Dr. Falk, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Well, Dr. Falk, I want to start right here. A recent survey conducted by Merck Manuals for Global Medical Knowledge Day showed that more than two-thirds of Americans say that they often hear conflicting medical information from family and friends. Why is that? Well, that's, that's a good point. I mean, I, I, I'm glad people are talking about health information with their family and friends. You know, all of us are and should be very actively engaged in our health. Um, when it comes to conflicting information, and I, it, you know, I saw in your intro you mentioned experts. So, you know, experts is a word that really needs, you know, it's sort of like a trust but verify situation. You really want to know um, where is that information coming from? And, and that's what's most important when you're looking at conflicting results. Um, so, you know, even amongst the top leaders in medicine, there's going to be debate. There's going to be, um, you know, differences of opinion. But in general, we have a system within medicine to evaluate the evidence that is backing something up. Now, some things we actually don't have a lot of argument about because the evidence is so strong in one direction that everyone who's trained, who's qualified to address a particular question will actually agree because the evidence is so strong. Um, and that's what, you know, that's what we refer to as evidence-based medicine. Mm -hmm. um, this exact system for evaluating the quality of evidence for, for any type of medical advice. Sure. So a consensus is if I have a gash that's too big, I need to get that sewed up and go have a doctor look at it. But when we talk about something like, say, vaccines or whether or not to wear a mask and I'm going on, whether it be Facebook or Twitter, how do I differentiate what's the right information, what's the wrong information? So, you know, I, I think in this case, you know, if you are, you know, a trained medical professional, and I would even say, like, my my field is women's health. So if someone seeks me out for my opinion on that, I, I'm the right person to go to. So first of all, you have to, that, that's your number one thing. Who's giving the information? You know, what's their level of expertise? There's so much medical knowledge out there. And that's, that's one of the reasons we kind of created this Global Medical Knowledge Day. Um, there's so much medical information out there that no one person can claim to be expert in everything. So that, that would be my first step in vetting information. Who's giving me that information? What's their training? What's their qualifications? What's their day job? Is this what they do every day? Are they associated with a trusted institution um, that provides health care? So that would be my number one is who is this information coming from? And that's something we do in news too. We vet our sources. Are we making sure the place where the information coming from is a confirmed source and, and they know what they're talking about? But with the pandemic, I feel like people are consuming so much of this medical information. It's really easy to get overwhelmed because you see it on the news, you see it on your social media. How do people kind of consume it in a way where they can not get overwhelmed learning about all this medical information? Yeah, that is a great question. And I think, you know, it's the internet has so much um, information on it about absolutely everything. And I think with everything, we, you know, we take it with a grain of salt, right? So, you know, if you're looking up advice about something that's not medical, something to do a house repair or something, you know, you're not going to start demoing your house based on just any video you find. You're going to make sure that you can trust that source. And often what people do, and this is, I think, what they should do, is line up your trusted sources of information. So, you know, public health, major public health sources are always a good place to turn, CDC, NIH. Um, and then other providers of trusted information. So that's that's kind of where I come in, where my team comes in. You know, this is what we do. This is our day job. We, every day um, at the Merck Manuals, we sort through all the information that's out there. And actually, I, I actually don't know if you know this, but 
Um, we've been doing that for over 100 years. The um, manual was first published in 1899, mm -hmm. and it used to really sit. It's been, it was a book for a long, long time. It used to sit in everybody's house, like probably on their like kitchen shelf, and that's where they would turn for information. But those days for everyone where there was like one book and you knew it and you had it and your neighbor had it, those days are gone. So in today's world, you have to really say, I, I think that's people's best go-to strategy. Find a few sources, vet them, mm -hmm. and then turn to them again and again. I think, Dr. Falk, I think that makes perfect sense. You wouldn't trust the CDC when it comes to information on demoing your house, but when it comes to medical information, trust the professionals. Uh, Dr. Falk, thank you so much for helping us with that. Enjoy the rest of your day, and thank you for waking up early with us. Okay, great. Thank you so much.